Hello and welcome to Film Vomit Podcast, an extension of the Vomit Series, a podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mac Taylor, and here with me today is... Hey, it's a Cole Selby again. And we are here to talk about, on our road to Ginger Dead Man vs. The Evil Bong, mm. The Evil Bong from 2006. Yep. Yep. You can't have Ginger Bread Man vs. Evil Bong without Evil Bong. And yes. And this is, uh, like, not, a, not an origin story, but the first of The Evil Bong yes. series of movies. Uh, and what were your thoughts going in, Cole, after we came off of Ginger <laughs> Dead Man? Well, um, I knew it was going to be a stoner flick, so I was already kind of like, you know, it's, I, it's obviously going to have some humor that I'm going to find hilarious uh, being a stoner myself. And then also knowing that Chong is going to be in it, um, I was immediately like, this is, this is probably going to be pretty funny. I'm probably going to like this movie, like, because he's funny. He's in it. Um, yeah, I, I, I went into it kind of open, uh... With, especially with you saying that it's better than the ginger dead man, so I was like, okay, that's that's good, that's good. At least at least it's better than that. I didn't want to like experience something like that twice in a row. <laughs> yeah, um, a- after Ginger Dead Man, I was still I, even though I was like, I remember this being better. I was still like, Ooh, I don't know, man. <laughs> like I, I, Ginger Dead Man was bad, and I sat through this. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's and I've also watched a few other bad movies for other reviews I got coming up, so I was just really like low, and this one just was like, wow, this that felt like a a movie, yeah, <laughs> not a good one, but <laughs> a movie, yeah, definitely. So we start out, we get a great opening song because this this movie has a decent soundtrack. It, like uh, like what was what was the group again? Like uh, District Seven? Yeah, District yeah, District Seven, I think. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Did they make the um, Did they make the music for all for like did they make all the music in the movie? No, I think a lot of just, it was like just like a lot, it was a lot of like uh, like underground groups at yeah. the time. But still, like they have a soundtrack. The Ginger yeah. Dead Man had like generic yeah, it was bad music and generic title sequence with like mm-hmm. one like a font and a color. This had like its own kind of unique font. It had the smoke and the weed and the trippy kind of thing going on. There, there, there was elements to this that made it feel like it's its own thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and just a little fun fact going in because I didn't really know where else to bring it up at the the clock in their apartment at all times reads four twenty. It never doesn't say that. Wow, that's funny. Uh, so we meet uh, the four main characters, I guess, of the movie. Uh, we have Alistair, who's kind of the stereotypical nerd type. Bachman, who is the uh, stereotypical like surfer bro. Yeah. Uh. Larnell, who's the conspiracy burnout. Yeah. And Brett, who was the burnout athlete. Yeah. Because the, the only thing these th- three of them have in common is smoking weed. Mm-hmm. So Alistair is running out a small space in this apartment with uh, yeah. no bedrooms. Yeah. For 40, 45 bucks a week. Yeah. Uh, and L- Larnell is kind of, he kind of looks like the typical character you would see in like an American Pie movie or like a Van mm-hmm. Wilder movie. He's always wearing the bathrobe at all times, mm-hmm. constantly talking about partying and the man and this mm-hmm. and that and the other, uh, trying to, you know, talk smarter than he actually is kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we meet Bachman also, he's like sleeping in a bed of like porno mags. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He sleeps with his porno mags. Which is a weird yeah. touch. Yeah. Uh, and Alistair is also, he's kind of like the annoying kind of smart, where he's yeah. like, they're like, ah, and he's like, yeah, actually, it's Alistair. It's Alistair. And he he talks so weird. Like, I know you're supposed to be smart, but you don't have to, like. It's like uh, like Billy and early Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Like, you don't have to over exaggerate everything they say because, like, they could be smart and still, yeah. like, talk like a normal person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we meet Brett, and he he's like, "Oh, what is this? Revenge of the Nerds 12? And I'm like, "There's only four Revenge of the Nerds movies. Why would we jump right to 12? <laughs> uh, and he's talking about like, you need to work out, bro. You need to get that red meat, that protein. And he's like, "Actually, red meat's not that good for it." He's like, "Oh, whatever, man. Pansy, you need to get pussy." And I'm like, <laughs> "Ugh, he's such a stereotypical yeah. like." Yeah, he jock kind of, like bro. he like he immediately comes off as just like a dickhead. But then it's like, but he yeah. he, he comes, but he also comes off a little bit as like a. Like a dickhead, but the sake of trying to make Alistair like better, I guess. In like, a way, like, like he's being he's being a kind of a closest friend to Al because you know he like he like when it, when Brock lone like has to 
loan, like get money from Al again. Like he's like, man, why do you do that? Why, like yeah. you said not to do it's that. It's kind of implied that, but like at the same time, there's not, yeah. not a whole lot of story here to yeah. kind of make that like, a useful. Like he like he buy, like he buys him like food. Uh, it's like he got bulk up or whatever. Yeah. Um, it, he, I mean, he does try. He does get him with uh, that lady. Tries to. And uh, Brett got kicked out of baseball for failing a drug test. So he's kind of yeah. like an ang- angry about his glory days being yeah. gone. Yeah. And he's, um, he's still really obsessed with it too. With how yeah. obsessed he's he, about his trophy. He's like, yeah, his one thing in the room is this trophy case. And he looks and there's a shell on it. And he's like, what the hell is this? Botman's like, oh, it's from my trip to Maui, man. <laughs> and he throws the shell in his cereal, which makes like a bowl breaking noise. Yeah. But like it's a plastic bowl. And then the next shot, he still has the bowl. Yeah. And, so, and the shell isn't like shattered. I thought something, no. I actually thought it broke. I thought something broke. And yeah. And, it, and when you like cut back to it, nothing has happened. It's like, oh, I can't hear the ocean anymore, man. I think you broke it. Yeah, that, I wrote that line. It was a, there, there, there's a <laughs> lot of jokes. Like, they're, they're yeah. rapid fire, mm-hmm. you know, jokes. Like, this, if you take out the evil bong stuff and just make this, like, a sitcom about <laughs> these guys, it could, it could work. Like, the, yeah. I, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but there, there's a route to take with this. Yeah. Um, uh, and as we have Brett, uh, he, uh, he's, like, talking about buying this bong uh, Larnell. Yeah. Larnell's, Larnell's talking about is. like him yeah, and Larnell, yeah. him and Bachman want to buy this bong for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh I think just because it's like cool, maybe. I mean I mean like fucking Because it's a haunted bomb, like why would you want that? <laughs> like, I mean uh, he's a weird guy. He's a weird guy. Uh and Bachman sort of name drops the movie because like it's a killer fucking bong, <laughs> but like you know, it, it'd yeah. been better if this movie was called the killer fucking bong. Yeah, but uh, nevertheless, we get a little bit of name drop there. Mm. Uh, so Larnell is like playing Super Nintendo and like token to music, and Alistair's trying to study. Mm-hmm. This is why it doesn't work when four dudes live in the same room. Yeah, uh, I'd say they they have a little bit of, of a tiff. Uh, until uh, Rabbit shows up to deliver said bong. So, you know, mm-hmm. we'll see Rabbit a lot more in the future yeah. movies, but we do get a little bit of a cameo here where they he's, re- like, talking they- about his job and, like, how much he loves his job. Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, they, he was, like, really focused on yeah. for that one scene. And, and if you're really just watching this movie, it's odd. Because he never shows back up Ever. in this movie, and it has no real relevance to the plot other than he delivered the bong. Yeah, he's a delivery guy. Yeah. Like, like he could just be a guy who's really serious about his delivery job. He really likes it. Like, but they they, they gave him so much like emphasis. Mm. And um, then also, we learned that Larnell comes from a rich family, but was cut off from his money after he dropped out of law school. Yeah. So I guess he's not go. He's just living in this apartment. I guess. I guess and, he's not doing anything. Yeah, because he's the only one that really doesn't leave the apartment at some point. Like, we know Alistair goes to college. Mm-hmm. Bachman is always going to get drugs. And Brett, I think, still goes to school. Yeah. I mean, he went to the, he went to, he goes like school parties and he yeah. you know, picks up chicks from the yeah. school. So, what does Larnell do? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. All, all, uh, uh, all that happened to, uh, um, Brock, not, not Brock, but, uh, Bachman. Bachman. Yeah. Bachman. Uh, oh, crap. What was I going to say? Ah, I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was going to say something I completely fucking forgot. Um, oh, but uh, uh, back to when they get the bong, anyway. Yeah, um, and Larnell th- compares it to a naked yeah, woman, even yeah. though there's nothing on it. He's like, he's it's shaped like a woman. There's the tits and there's the badge. And it's like, what? I thought he was going to if it's like tits and ass. <laughs> no, it's a badge, and it <laughs> like, makes no sense. Yeah, like I would have, un- I would have got that a little bit. It's like he's like, and also mm. like the glaring thing here is that this is a hookah, yeah, and not a bong, yeah. But again, killer hookah doesn't sound that great yeah so i i, I understand the I, I agree with the name of the movie yeah. but it is you know just i just want to go ahead and point it out for someone mentions yeah. it it is a hookah yeah, yeah it's a hookah which is very good to use if you're you know sharing yeah and you don't yep. want to pass the bong around because everyone's got a hose yeah it's cool uh and they're all talking like brett's like that wasn't even it wasn't any different and like it was a great high he's like it was good weed yeah but it's not like the bong didn't do anything which a bong is not supposed yeah, to do yeah, anything yeah yeah but it's like, just it's just that you mean to smoke it yeah like they're all like like referencing like this bong is what gets them high like yeah like a bong technically can make a difference but that's only because you can get more smoke yeah. in like a larger bong 
Like the bong itself doesn't affect it, and like, and they're all acting like it is, except for except for Brett, Brett, which is reasonable. <laughs> and then Bachman's like, "There's no such thing as a bad high, man. Just like there's no bad uh, blowjob." Yeah. And he's like, "I beg to differ because Carla Brewster." Her teeth, it was like it was a bunch of piranha on a baby goat. And now remember that, because that does come up yeah. later. Uh, and then for some reason, Larnell feels the need to put the bong by the trophies. Yeah. Like, He's yeah. like, it's feminine, surrounded by masculinity. He's so spiritual. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's trying to like be deep, and yeah. he can't be deep. But it's like, but why does it need to go by Brett's shit? Yeah. Like, and Brett's all, it's like, he's like, no, dude, don't put it there. It's my trophy. And he still puts it there. Like, come on, man. Like, just keep it on the table. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's where you use it. Yeah, because else you just got to keep moving it. Like, yeah. just keep it there. Then you're going to drop it. And keep then it on the coffee sad. table. <laughs> uh, and then the bong in the middle of the night just starts whispering. Yeah. And glowing. I think and, Alistair, like, yeah. goes he up. He sees it, it, and then he trips over Brett, and then we cut to 24 hours later. Like, this we is don't. The, like, and this is the dumb thing. Like, time has already progressed in this movie by days and possibly weeks. Yeah. And this is the only time we get it 24 hours later. You couldn't have just snapped to the morning. <laughs> right. Or you could have just said, like, you know, in Ginger Dead Man, like, we didn't get the, the, the jump in time. And we were, but this is like, this was a little unnecessary. Yeah. Like, and, you, you could have just cut to morning and we would understand that, like, time has passed. And the thing is, they were wrong. It wasn't 24 hours. It was the morning. It was like yeah. eight. <laughs> like, all they did was wake, go to bed and wake up. Like, they didn't fucking skip that to the next night when everyone's sleeping. Uh, so then Bachman is, like, everyone's smoking, but yeah. Bachman's, like, really going at it. Yeah. Uh, and Brett brings Luann and Janet over. Uh, Luann played by the chick that played Sarah in The Ginger Dead Man. So mm -hmm. we have our, our first kind of recurring actor. Full Moon always has these recurring people. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's our first one that we, we've seen her as the, the main character, mm -hmm. and she wasn't that great. But here is Luann. She doesn't do a terrible job. No, she doesn't. Uh, All the other, other lady. Um, Janet. 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 She's a, she's a little overbearing. Yeah, uh, she's like that. She's like that typical uh, sorority well, girl. She's meant type. to be there like for Alistair. Yeah, and like Larnell goes to hit on her, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm not that interested." And he's like, "Hey, it's okay. It's refreshing that we we broke the boundaries of male and female communication. Just being open about our interests and disinterest, man. I dig it." And I'm like, "What? That you want to be a man? Like, I like. I mean, I mean, you know, kudos for taking rejection well, but but like, don't make what, it a big deal. What the it. fuck are you saying half the time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's he said he's trying to be deep. I know, and it's <laughs> annoying." Uh, but I, I love him in the movie, but it's like, mm -hmm. if, if, if this was like someone I was hanging out with, I'd be like, dude, seriously, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, and then Alistair comes out from washing his laundry in the sink. Mm -hmm. And when he's trying to hit on Janet, he doesn't know that he's got a bunch of uh, suds on his penis. Yeah, basically. like. So there's a, you know, there's an ejaculation joke, which Brett doesn't see is a joke. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of an awkward moment, but, of course, he's the awkward character. Yeah. And, like, I mean, it worked that way. I mean, everyone's having a good time. I don't think it really hurt. It no, hurt it, it actually bad. kind of gave him a little bit of charm with Janet. She was, like, yeah. she thought it was fun, mm -hmm. a yeah. fun moment. Yeah, that's what really, like, like really made her, like, oh, he's, he's cute. Man. And Luann then just starts taking a shit ton of Bachman's weed while he's passed out, like, taking handfuls. No, no I, I, th I think, didn't someone say that she could? Well, she asks Bachman, and he kind of goes, uh, but he's like, oh, yeah. out. Yeah. And that was a lot of fucking weed. But she already was taking handfuls when she asked, so it's like, that's a lot of yeah, weed. that's a lot of weed. Like, like, I know you already have a lot of weed, but I'm And they gonna, said it was good stuff, yeah, too, like, so. I'm, I'm not going to give away, like, a handful of fucking weed. Yeah, like, she took, like, three or four handfuls. That's a lot of weed. Yeah, that's like, a lot. Like, like, you could take a, a couple Gs, maybe. Like, how, are they even, how are they even paying for all? I, it's not really established. I mean, because well, they paid for the bong with the rent money. Well, Bachman like apparently has enough money to go to Maui. That's true. So maybe he has a job. Maybe he's like a dishwasher and been saving up money. Fuck. I mean, he is the one who goes and gets the weed. He is the one that goes and gets the weed. Yeah. Maybe he actually goes to school. Yeah. I mean, that's never said. Only Larnell is the one we know is isn't in school. Yeah. Um, and then after that, yeah, uh, shortly after that is when uh, we Well, get... and also she's talked about, like, she's dressed as a cheerleader. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Alistair's like, oh, so you're a cheerleader at the school. She's like, no, I'm just dressed like this because Brett likes it. And it's like, oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, cool. <laughs> but it's, 
It, it was a kind of funny moment. And then she also com- she compares the bong, which is Larnell's baby, mm-hmm. to a, a dirty dick that yeah. she refuses to suck. And he's like, that's harsh, man. Like, like is that harsh even for you? Like, and then uh, the bong, E.B., calls uh, her a bitch, and it gets blamed on, on Larnell. Yeah. Because, you know, no one knows the bong is alive. Oh. So at this point, Bachman is sucked into Bong World, where he is greeted by strippers and the guy from Deccan and Evil telling yeah. him to be wary of vampires. And a girl walks up with uh, skull titties, or as yeah. you'd say, go- he says goth boobs. Yeah. And they proceed to bite into his neck and murder him. Yep. It, that's uh, And, and uh, I think he's pretty okay with it. Yeah, he says I love you at the end of it. Yeah. With and uh, with this uh, this uh, little voodoo. Well, yeah. Then the thing. the Ooga Booga puppet is aggressively jerking off yeah. while smoking the a background. joint. Yep. Just it, it very aggressive. It was very odd. And the Bong World footage has this like ripple effect over it. Yeah. Where it's like in the, in the corners of each side, and it's very distracting because it's there the whole time they're in Bong World. Yeah. And it's it could have been done a lot better. They could have just did like a little transition to know we're in the bong world yeah. or whatever, but no, we just had to have this whole yeah. scene. It was very distracting the entire time. And I felt like my vision was just like constricted. It's like, I'm not allowed to look around. I have to like focus on what's going on. I'm like, I'm like right to set of the screen the whole time. Um, it was, yeah, it was very distracting every time there you went to the bong world though. Mm-hmm. So then back at the apartment, the guys discover Bachman is deceased. Mm-hmm. And they, like, I think Brett talks about just dumping his body at his family's <laughs> home. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's what the mob does. He's like, well, then they'll think the mob did it. You don't <laughs> have to worry about us. Uh, but then we we're interrupted by Larnell's grandfather. Yeah. Who pretty much just comes over to shit all over yeah. Larnell. Yeah, he's fucking, he's fucking mean he man. says you're as useful as a soiled tampon and you have the brain of a of a urinal of cake, a urinal cake. <laughs> like that, that got me a little bit. that was funny <laughs> that got me a bit but like no he was just fucking mean he was yep. a mean guy and he comes over like starts like bragging about his new wife yep and you know larnell jokes about banging her and then he gets on him again and then we meet his hot wife who is like a 90 year old woman yeah. Who looks barely alive? Yeah, she's like fuck, shaking, like really slowly, like walking to the couch, like heavy breathing, like damn. And then it's like he's like, "I'm gonna poop and leave." It's like, why did you have her park the car and walk all the way over here just to leave like yeah. five minutes later? You could just she give it in the car waiting. Yeah, and then they make a little big deal because he has to go by you know uh, Bachman's dead body to get to the yep. bathroom. Um, so Alistair has to run in and like say, oh, I can help you and mm-hmm. stuff. A little, little bit of awkwardness there. A little, little awkward, yeah, to get him into the bathroom. And then it just cuts to after the, that he's left. And then right. Larnell's upset that the bong was put on the floor. Yeah, like, I mean, and like, he said hide it. Yeah. Like, there's not very many options. Like, where was he wanting him to hide it that's not on the floor? Like, in your pants? Like, what are you trying to do? Like, like Larnell is like into this bong. Yeah, he, he, like, he's a little dickish, dickish about the bong. And they're like, well, maybe the the weed killed him. Yeah. And they're like, it's not killer weed. It's we're gonna kill her bomb. Yeah. 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 But they're like, they're like, it couldn't be the weed that poisoned us. Yeah. Because um, Brett smoked it. Yeah. Um. But, but they they do they do bring up about how much Bachman smoked. Cause apparently he smoked like a shit ton. But still. Yeah. The weed's not going yeah, it's not, to kill it's you. It's not going to. Um. Yeah, so then they do like how do they like do they even come to a consensus of what they think it is at this point? Nope. No, yeah, they just they just like, think a twenty something year old yeah. just killed over for yeah. no reason and died. Yeah, very strange. Um. Yeah, then uh, they uh, Brett starts complaining about how messy it is, and how the ladies are gonna come over. Yep, because he wants to bone. Yeah, and then they decide to put Bachman in the basement. Yeah. So while they're doing that. Uh, the bong coaches Brett into it, mm-hmm. and he is then killed by Jaws titties. Yes, whilst the ginger dead man jerks off. Very. I don't know why they have to do that every time. Uh, the third one didn't have a masturbation. Yeah, yeah, but like, it's very. 
It's weird. Yeah. Like why? Like why was this put in the movie? Just to be like, uh, hey, look, it's a cookie jerking off. <laughs> That's funny. Comedy. Uh, you know, same way with Cedar Chucky. They're like, hey, Chucky's jerking off. That's funny, right? God. Um, and then also in his dream, his grandpa was like wheeled into a pit. Yeah. But it's like, was that real? Or was that just an illusion? I, I don't know. That it's hard to tell because his grandfather had no other use in the plot yeah. other than to just show up and degrade him. Yeah. Because he didn't come back. Besides this little thing that may or may not have been a dream. Uh, and also, Alistair's flirting hard with Janet at the party. Uh, and everyone but Alistair smokes from the hookah. Yeah. Uh, and then Luann does the crazy, <laughs> horny pogo yeah, dance. Yeah, the, gra- the, the incredible... Sexy pogo. Dance. Well, she's like throwing her arms around and like shaking all over. Oh, God. oh yeah, like, like she's really smacking weird. Smacking his leg and like, 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 like the like the pogo dancing was really just like the climax. Yeah, of it for me, because then like she's doing all this weird shit yeah, to like, try to turn Brett on, even she, though he's like passing. She's like out. slapping his leg, and, like yeah, like really aggressively just slap, 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 on his knee. <laughs> and doing all these crazy movements. Yeah, like 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 rubbing all over him, like rubbing her crotch on like his on his leg too, like and like and like screaming, "I'm horny." Yeah. And, and then they both end up passing out after yeah. the, after she gets on the pogo stick, yeah. which she wasn't really pretty decent at pogo. Yeah, she could no hands pogo, and she legitimately did that. So you know that's cool. And then Janet really starts coming on Alistair. Yeah. And he ignores the poon mm-hmm. to check on. Larnell, who is now dead. So then that kills the mood very fast. Yes. Uh, and then Eby's, they notice Eby's face is changing because as mm-hmm. she absorbs more souls, her face develops in the ball, even though yeah. in, the, in the second movie that's gone. Yeah. But yeah, so they show us that. And then uh, they're like, he's like, an a evil bong? That doesn't make sense. And she's like, of course it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is. Are you, are you talking about the movie or the <laughs> the actual event? Right. It, it's it's weird. <laughs> uh. So then Luann and Brett are lured into Bong World, mm-hmm. and she gets scared by Jack in the Box from Demonic Toys, and yeah. is then just taken away. Yep, yeah, just taken off somewhere. And then Brett is killed by Kissy Titties. Yeah, who turns out to be. Uh, What's her name? The BJ lady. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's her, and she then murders his baby goat with piranhas. Yep. It's a great time. So, he's now dead. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, and then Janet passes out as EB is now stronger. And then we meet Jimbo, played yeah. by the great Tommy Chong. Yes. Hey, Jimbo's great. Who says that his wife sold him an evil bong and that, you know, he's got to kill all his friends and he's got to stop it. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah he goes off like, yeah, she sold all my stuff, man. Like my, Including my, my Hot Wheels. My Hot Wheels I miss my Hot Wheels, man. <laughs> I miss my Hot Wheels. <laughs> um, so Alistair decides he's going to take a hit and go in yeah. after his girl yeah, uh, with Charles, only vitamins. Yeah, that, yeah, that, uh, that he's like, what is this? Him. He's like... I don't know vitamins. <laughs> so it's like, I don't think Tommy Chong had a script. I think yeah. he was just, it was like a Gary Busey thing where it's like, yeah, just say whatever you want. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, it works out. It, he can't really mess up. I mean, Chong is gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he goes in to try and save his lady. Yeah, and... Um, He's having a great who... Uh, well, Chong bust out the hammer on Evie yeah. right before we get to that. <laughs> yeah. And then Alistair... Won't be enticed by the ladies. Mm-hmm. They kind of start to, but no. Mm-hmm. He's going after his lady, where he meets Jack Death from the Transfer series. Mm-hmm. Who, you know, Jack Death in the Transfer series, he's like hunting uh, like people who mind control people. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, how do I get out of here? And he's like, over there. And he's like, all right, you got a light? Because Jack Death's always smoking in the mm-hmm. movies. And he goes, I don't smoke. And then he goes, it's okay, cool haircut. Only squids have dry hair because he called transfers squids. <laughs> a lot of transfers references. 
Wow. So if you watched Transfers, which I did last September, mm. you understand this joke. <laughs> but for everyone else in the world, that made no sense. <laughs> All these cameos, I know they're like using their properties – but yeah. it makes no sense in the grand retrospective of it all. Yeah. So the hammer doesn't work, so Chong t- tries to chainsaw the bong, which is also mm. not working. No. And then Janet's with a male stripper. Alistair pulls her away from there. Mm. Uh, and he gets a gives a really big America speech. Yeah. Or we, we, we have the right to get high when if we want to. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to let some you know, evil voodoo curse stop that <laughs> from my rights. Yeah, like he's he's really into about like I want like smoke I smoke when I want to and so like he's really into it like and mm. it's like a whole patriotic theme behind him is like oh wow. Yeah. It was fun. It was good though. It was like really and then out of, out of, out of Bill Mosley just kind of stumbles into the movie cuz yeah. he kind of has a jokes like I asked the questions. Where are we? <laughs> and he's like seriously, where are we? And then he's like, you gotta get out of here. And he's like, okay. And then he just leaves. <laughs> so I think Bill Mosley just wandered on the wrong set. Yeah. And they were like, hey, just be in the shot real quick. All right, get out of here, Bill. Jesus. Yeah, it was very, that, like, that's very. I think very even, strange. like, it's, there, there's a point where, like, he's doing a character. And then he's just like, fuck it. I don't, yeah, even, the, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, he's just like, in that shift, I was like, that's, that was sudden. Jesus. Uh, and then... Jimbo is then knocked out by EB with really good weed. Yeah. And he he tells them to go. The vitamins wake up uh, Alistair and Janet because he gave her the vitamins yeah. and she stopped being so horny. Mm-hmm. And so they go back. Jimbo is stuck to blow up because somehow he strapped the bomb on his chest from earlier, even yeah. though he was sucked like, right in. Like if he would have been sucked in, like like did, like would would the bong have sucked into the dynamite? Yeah, exactly. The bomb, like that's weird. And then for some reason, this undoes all the deaths. Yeah. So Larnell and Brett wake up, and Bachman comes out of the basement thinking they had a big party. Yeah. So all is well, and then we see Chong partying with the 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 girls, and they're like, "We'll do whatever you want." He's like, "Oh, really, man? I want you girls to play with my Hot Wheels." <laughs> yeah, and then it's the strippers and Tommy Chong playing with Hot Wheels for the last few minutes, and it's pretty great. He's, he's, he's like riding the Hot Wheels over their titties as hills. Yep, it's weird. And that is the evil bong. Yep. That was the... it's a, it, not a lot to talk about, but like, g- give me your overall thoughts and opinions to kind of wrap this out, and then I'll do mine. Uh, overall, I, I think it was it, it was nice. It was funny, not not horror at all. No, no not none at all. Like the kind of the it's deaths, comedy. They, there's comedy. deaths there, but it like even the deaths so, are funny. Like yeah, the way it's they a do loose them. horror. Like you're getting killed by titties. Yep. Like kill well, really bras. Yeah. Bra yeah. puppets. Yeah. And it like it was it was a good film. Like I would recommend someone would watch this. Yes, I would too. It's a nice uh this kind of thing to watch with your friends and laugh with. Mm. And uh also compared to the Ginger Dead Man, this is this is a movie. Yeah. It's got a soundtrack, it's got sound cues. They really overuse the transition with the wipe effect and the yeah. weed. Like you could just let things happen. But if you took took this movie, took out E B and said, like, larnell has got to convince his grandfather he's still in law school or he loses his money Yeah. as a TV show. It'd be dumb, but, like, I'd yeah. watch that. Yeah. Because a lot of the actors in here are actually not bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. That, that Especially compared to the Ginger Dead Man. Like, these people can act. Yeah. Like, they, they, all, they all did really well. They're and... all playing one-note characters. Yeah. And they hit those one notes well. Yeah. So that's going to end our coverage on the evil Bong, stay tuned next time when we talk about Ginger Dead Man 2, Passion of the Crust. Yay. Until next time, I'm Mac Taylor. Stay safe and stay nerdy.